Hey tea heads, this is Don from Mayleaf. In this video, should you be seasoning your tea? In this video, I'm gonna be showing you a couple of experiments that you can do with salt to find out whether or not salt has any place at your tea session. Now, before you think I'm going crazy, Salt has been traditionally used in Chinese tea culture. Prior to the Tang Dynasty, when tea was essentially a food product used to make soup, so it was taking a fresh leaf or dry leaf and basically boiling it up with other ingredients like ginger, scallions, um, and mandarin peel, they were adding salt to this soup. Now, there's a couple of reasons for that. The first, of course, is it's a soup and therefore savory, and so salt makes sense to be added to it. But the second reason is tea, especially when it's brewed um, for a long period of time or boiled for a long period of time, will obviously go quite bitter. And salt has the ability to attenuate bitterness. It does this by stimulating type one taste bud cells on your tongue and on your palate. And when those type one taste bud cells are stimulated, they then affect the ability of type two bitter taste bud cells to receive information or to be stimulated. And therefore it turns down bitterness. Even in the Tang Dynasty, in Lu Yu's Classics of Tea, he writes that salt should be added to the water. Now, at that time, tea was being brewed more like a matcha, so taking sun-dried green tea, probably, and grinding it down to a powder, nothing as fine as matcha, so, you know, coarse powder, and basically brewing it up with hot water, with boiling water. And so again, large surface area, sun-dried green teas is going to make for a potent and bitter brew, and therefore it makes sense to add salt to the water. Let me show you an experiment that you can do very easily and simply to prove the fact that salt attenuates bitterness. So what I have here is a pretty basic, but you know, decent quality green tea from China. You'll see a lot of this type of tea around, often referred to as Yunwu tea, so cloud mist tea. This is actually a decent quality version of that tea. Now, those tea heads out there with a sensitive disposition, you may want to look away now because I am going to be breaking all the rules. I have freshly boiled water here and I am going to be taking these leaves, these green tea leaves, and crushing them a bit here. Oops, get some in my salt. So crushing the leaves a bit and um, I've got to stop doing that. I'll move the salt away. And uh, so I'm, you know, getting a lot of surface area here, quite a lot of leaf. I'm gonna be hitting it with boiling water and intentionally brewing this all wrong. So let me just pour this here for the time being. Right, boiling water goes with it. I'm not gonna rinse it. So I am literally breaking all the rules. I have another glass here to pour this water away. And I'm gonna be brewing it intentionally, over extracting it and we're gonna make sure that we get a nice bitter brew. It'll not be like they were brewing in the Tang Dynasty, of course, but you know, it'll definitely have that over extracted taste. So I'm gonna intentionally leave it for a little bit. And then what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be dipping our finger, well, we're gonna taste it first to, to experience its true glory of bitterness. And then what we're gonna be doing is dipping our finger in salt, putting that salt on our tongue, and then tasting again and seeing whether or not the bitterness has been attenuated. I should say, if you're interested in all of uh, these ideas of flavor perception and you have not listened to our podcast with Virginia Utamolin Lovelace, I love saying that name, if you've not heard that, then go check out that podcast. I'll put a link in the description below and you can really dive into the ideas and concepts around flavor perception, fascinating. Really, really love learning about how taste and aroma perception works. Okay, that's probably enough. As I said, this is a decent quality Yunwu green tea. You can see the color is very orange now, uh, cloudy, over extracted, no filter as well, just to you know add a bit of tea uh, powder in there just for further extraction. Here we go, let's give this a taste. 
Wah, bitter. Astringent, bitter, puckering. I mean, the flavor notes are not bad, especially after you've swallowed. But it has that stewed taste. Anybody who's tasted a green tea tea bag will know that taste, that stewed, overly um, acrid, bitter taste. Nothing that any tea head would enjoy. But now let's just dip our finger into this salt and it's worth saying that this is good quality molden salt. So, you know, get yourself good quality salt. And we're just gonna take a little bit of that salt and put it on our tongue. Let that salt go all over our taste buds. Now what's happening is that is stimulating those type one taste bud cells, which means that when I taste this again, it should be less bitter. Here we go. like I would say 50%, maybe even more, maybe 70% less bitterness. There is hardly any bitterness now in this tea. Now there is a bit more because the first mouthful sort of washed away some of the salt. So it's a little bit more bitter, but certainly nothing like the bitterness when I first tasted it. I still have a residual saltiness in my mouth, the taste of saltiness in my mouth much more drinkable. So therefore salt and its ability to attenuate bitterness has a like historical use. Is it useful now, nowadays? Well, you should not be drinking low quality tea or broken leaf and you should not be brewing it wrong. So clearly, you know, you should not need salt to attenuate bitterness. However, for example, let's say you've got a really good uh, raw poor tea or a really good green tea and you've forgotten your brew. You've done a forgotten brew, which means you've, you've left it to overbrew and you're like, ah, that's just a bit over extracted. You taste it, it's a little bit over extracted, but you don't want to waste it. It's still pretty good. Then sure, go dip your finger in some salt, you know, and you can taste that extraction. So, you know, you can use it for that purpose to attenuate bitterness for less well-made tea or lower quality tea. I would always advise just get higher quality tea and brew it properly, of course. So the attenuation of bitterness, there is a purpose, but what about the flavor enhancing properties of salt? Can salt be used to take a good tea, a great tea, and actually improve the experience in the cup. Well, I've been doing a fair amount of experiments with this, and my overall conclusion is that salt is hardly ever uh, an addition which you really need to have to enhance high quality tea. There is, however, one tea type which I think salt can Let's say it, it doesn't necessarily improve it, but it changes it in a very interesting way that you may prefer at any given time when you're drinking it. And that is of course black teas. And specifically, I'm talking about Dian Hong teas. So Yunnan black teas. This is our golden bud fresh in. This is uh, March 2020 picking from Fengqing village, 1000 meters up. This is a gorgeous version of a Dian Hong. Dian Hong just means Yunnan red, right? Dian is a shortened version of, a, is a shortened way of saying Yunnan province. So Dian Hong, Hong means red. So Yunnan red, they call black teas in China red teas. So essentially it's Yunnan black tea, but this we call golden bud. You can see lots of beautiful spiral shaped golden buds. And the reason why I think that salt can work with golden buds and, and black teas in general, is that essentially what salt does is it reduces bitterness, it reduces astringency, it also reduces greenness. So I would not recommend using salt for any teas where they've got a very bright, high, uh, light, green tasting, fresh tasting um, aromatics and flavor profile because you're just going to soften it too much. So I would not recommend using it for green teas, for those green uh, Tieguan Yins. Of course, if you've overbrewed it and it's 
overly aggressive, then you can use salt to attenuate it, as I've just showed. But if you're brewing it properly and you've got high quality teas, I would not be using salt for any of those teas where you want to maintain those fresh, bright aromas. Similarly, with raw pua, I think it, it doesn't really contribute much. In fact, it softens out some of those bright notes. However, with black teas and potentially with ripe pua teas and hei cha in general, if you want to accentuate softness, if you want to accentuate savoriness and umami sort of brothiness, if you want to accentuate milkiness and sweetness, but all in that warmer arena, so warm, sweet, soft, milky. If you want to accentuate those notes and you don't mind, or the tea character doesn't have a lot of those bright, high, fresh notes at, in the first place, then you may want to experiment a little bit with salt. You may want to. And it's worth giving it a go, and I'll show you how you do that. So I've got this water, which has cooled down slightly, so this is about 95 degrees, which is fine. We're not gonna do a full 10-step tasting of this tea. You can check it out. I'll put a link in the description below. So you've got those lovely golden buds. Yeah, I think that's probably enough. Let's give it a quick smell. So predominance of malt, a little bit of milk chocolate, um, a little bit of hay, a little bit of black pepper. So all of those notes that I've just said are all in the warmer spectrum, right? They're all gonna be stimulating the warmer um, receptors of your taste buds and your trigeminal system. And that's why it has more suitability for salt. I'm sure a lot of people are thinking that I've lost the plot here a little bit, but just try this experiment out yourself. You may be surprised. Okay. Mmm, really got um, like a dark baked bread. I think in my tasting notes I wrote rye bread. You know, slightly sort of tangy. There is some honey in there, a little bit of spice, still the black pepper we were talking about before. A little bit stony, so there's some mineral note happening as well. And what's interesting is I find that salt tends to, you know, take away a little bit of that minerality, interestingly, and just bring you to a more milky, rounded experience. Right, let's brew this up, and we're gonna brew it up relatively strong. There's a fair amount of leaf in here, but I want to do this in one infusion. So we're going to be pouring from the Gaiwan into the cup. This is our Gong Fu Solo set, if you've not picked one up. The best way to just brew Gong Fu style quickly, easily, and without using a lot of leaf. So we've got the guy one, the cup, and a towel. That forms part of the set, plus it comes in a nice case. Um, so we're gonna pour directly in here. Lovely, sort of dark amber liquor. And we're going to immediately pour half into the other cup. All right, let's even this out. Okay, now then, time to add some salt to one. Now, I'm gonna say this very, very clearly. Be very, very conservative with how much salt you're gonna use. So, I've done this before, and I would say that if you look at my finger, one piece exactly the size as that just fell in. So I'm only gonna put another bit like that in, and that's well enough. Give that a little swirl. Now, better to start less, just do tiny little bits. Everyone's uh, perception is going to be different, so you might find that you're very sensitive to salt. So just putting a tiny, tiny, tiny bit in, right? Obviously, if you had more liquor, then you could put more in. But do this A, B, it's gonna be very, very interesting. Right, so let me taste the golden bud without any salt. Oh, a little acorny note that I don't remember. So I'm getting some sort of, yeah, green acorn, caramels, malts. A little bit of cocoa and a stoniness on the finish. A sort of contrast 
of soft and velvety in the mouth and then afterwards you get this sort of quite clean, slightly mineral stony finish. Okay, now let's taste the salted version. Thicker feeling, softer, much less of the stoniness at the end, softer finish, milkier, rounder, more accentuation of the malt, more accentuation of the sweetness of the tea, more black pepper um, in the unsalted, more of that cocoa bitterness there. Don't get any of that in the salted version. This almost tastes like milk has been added to it. So you're losing sort of the spice and the, the grip and the pepperiness of the original and you're gaining a rounded, sweeter, more milky, I would say a little bit more sort of comforting profile. I'm going to brew this again. Which do I prefer? Swings and roundabouts really depends on how I'm feeling. If I'm looking for something that's a little bit more um, piquant, a little bit more sort of, uh, yeah, spicy and awakening, I'd probably go for the unsalted. If I'm feeling something that's a little bit more comforting, a little bit more, yeah, a little bit more um, soft and rounded and warmer, then I would go for the salted version. But certainly, I would say that this is the tea type which has the most benefit from having salt next to you. So you could just take a little plate like I've done here of good quality salt with your black tea, just a little tiny bit in there, and you're gonna notice uh, this difference. It's an interesting experiment, if nothing else. So second infusion, slightly darker. Let's pour it again halfway up the cup here. Let's taste it again. Mm, more of that, that chocolatey cocoa note coming through. Mm. Yeah, spicy and stony and clean on the finish. Right, let's again add some of this salt. Be careful not to add too much. I'm intentionally gonna sort of overdo it a little bit. I would not add this much, but you know, um, I just wanna see how it goes. Obviously adding salt also accentuates the savory note in the tea a little bit, but what you're trying to do here is add salt a little bit just where it starts to hit threshold, where you start to notice saltiness. You don't wanna to go too far above that. You can go sub threshold, so it will still make a difference. Even if you don't taste the saltiness, you'll still note, you, you should still perceive a slight difference in the texture, the finish, and the flavor of the tea. How does this work? You know, a lot of people um, speculate that by reducing the bitterness, you are therefore allowing the other flavor profiles like the sweet to come up and to basically tweak the EQ balance. Maybe that's what's happening, I don't know. But it seems likely that it's to do with this modulation between taste buds. Here we go, a properly salted golden bud here. Yeah, I really like it. Now, I really like salt in my desserts. If you've watched any of my uh, recipe videos, I'm always saying make sure you salt your sweet foods. I just think that it just contributes to a rounded, more enjoyable sweetness. So it contributes to enhancing the sweetness. And that is what's happening here. It just tastes like a sort of, you know, salted caramel, salted malty, you know, malted drinks tend to have that slightly savory note to it. It definitely has a more milky character to it. Oh, okay, right at the end, the way I'm getting those slightly undissolved crystals, let's go for that part. That's definitely too much, but 
yeah, still I think that it works with the tea. It doesn't take away um, any elements in the tea that I think are essential for the experience. Whereas, for example, with the green teas, it would. With shung puas, it would. But with ripe pua teas, and with black teas especially, where it's really all about those warm notes, I just think you should give this a try and see what you think. Let me know in the comments section below, do you think that seasoning your tea has any contributing benefits? Do you think that it improves any tea types? Let me know your experiments and who knows, maybe a little plate of salt will be your partner for some of your tea sessions. That's it, tea heads. Check out our other videos, Taste Our Teas, wherever you are in the world by browsing mayleaf.com and come visit us if you're ever in London. Other than that, I'm Don from Mayleaf. Thank you for being a part of the revelation of true tea. Stay away from those tea bags. Keep drinking the good stuff and spread the word because nobody deserves bad tea. Bye.